20th century, to be more precise, in 1913, Chenonceau gets a new owner. Here he is on the avenue leading to the castle. He is the founder's grandson of an illustrious dynasty of chocolate makers, with factories in France and England and a distribution centre in New York City. His full name is Henri Emile Anatole Minier. Even the New York Times mentions the purchase. At the turn of the century, the Meunier works at Noisiel was reputed to be the largest chocolate factory in the world, and it reached its high day before World War I. Well known are the pioneering advertising strategies of the firm. This advertising poster of Fermin Buisset became one of the best internationally known examples of an image associated with a product. Buisset used his daughter Yvonne as a model to create what became an iconic image of a little graffiti girl using a piece of chocolate to write the company's name. Henri Meunier did not get much pleasure out of the castle. He died several months after he had bought Chenonceau. He is buried in the family grave of the Meuniers at the famous cemetery in Paris, Père Lachaise. His brother, Gaston Meunier, here on the left, obtained the castle. During the First World War, Gaston transformed the gallery of Catherine de Medici into a hospital for wounded soldiers. The story goes that the soldiers were allowed to fish in the river from the gallery windows, with little bells attached to their rods. They jingled when the fish bit. There is a tablet in the gallery which reads, here, 2,254 wounded were taken care of during the war between 1914 and 1918. As a result of his grandfather's will, in 1935, Antoine Meunier, the last of the Meunier family having the chocolate company, inherited Chateau Chenonceau. In 1940, the great flood of the Cher devastated Diane's Poitiers garden, which was not replanted until the 50s. Chenonceau was unsuccessfully bombed by the Germans in June 1940, and it was bombed anew in 1944 by the Allies, again in June. On the latter occasion, only the windows of the chapel were destroyed. During some time in the war, the line of the demarcation between the Nazi-occupied northern zone of France and the free zone of Vichy France was marked by the River Cher. The main entry of the castle was under German control. The southern exit was on the free part. The gallery across the river was used by the resistance. 
but the Nazis deforested their side of the river to enable them to more accurately track and capture those who succeeded in crossing. After the war, in the 50s, the Meunier family entrusted the chateau's restoration to Bernard Voisin. He successfully reconditioned the castle and its numerous outbuildings, protecting them from the rain and managed to restore the beauty and the prosperity of the gardens and the surrounding vineyards. In 1975, Jean-Louis Meunier, born in 1949, inherited the castle. Little by little, Chenonceau was given a new lease of life. It could now be open to the public, bearing witness to five centuries of history and culture. In 1962, the French novelist and essayist Marguerite Yourcenar wrote an essay on Chateau Chenonceau titled Ah, mon beau château, Ah, my beautiful castle. While versed in the world of classical antiquity, she was seen as a writer dealing with universal issues of life and death in a detached but hardly indifferent light. Et l'ensemble de l'organisation en somme est tout simplement d'abord une organisation humaine. The title of her essay on Chenonceau is inspired by a French children's song. À mon beau château, m'attend tire, lire, lire. À mon beau château, m'attend tire, lire, lire. In November 1988, nearly a namesake of Diane de Poitiers, Princess Diana, and her husband, Prince Charles, visited Chenonceau. Special for the occasion, the chateau was closed for public. In 2004, Princess Michael of Kent wrote a book on Diane de Poitiers and Catherine de Medici, The Serpent and the Moon, two rivals for the love of a Renaissance king. On her website, she states, that she simply wanted to tell the love story of a beautiful, cultured and fascinating woman, Diane de Poitiers, who lived in a ménage à trois. A salient detail is the fact that the princess, by birth an East European baroness, is a descendant of both Catherine and Diane. <laughs> Today, Chenonceau has fully recovered its glory. With its one million visitors, every year it is, with the exception of Palace of Versailles, the most visited castle in France.